So Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, what the world needs now, Jackie DeShan and that, and Paul Mazursky, director, 1969. So one of your 60s films. It's on a commercial right now that gets played every time I'm watching Mrs. America or. Uh, right. Well, when they Joey used Nathan. to Mrs. America, so we should you should mention that. Oh yeah, it was. It was used in Miss America. Now, I think that the people who made Miss America um, clearly have seen Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice because not only did they use the Jackie DeShannon, but I mentioned this in that entry I wrote on um, on the New Seeker song, that image from the last episode where the four of them are sitting on the couch. Yeah. I'm positive that's meant to evoke the famous image from Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice. And then the, the title of the episode also was based on that. Um, in Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice. Bob so and, I, you, I, should, I should just say, you keep saying Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice, which would be kind of funny because it's the it's Bob getting, and Carol and Ted. Okay, and, I'm getting the order. Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice would be an interesting. Yeah, yeah that'll be the 2023 remake. Um, <laughs> I don't have uh, to correct you on this stuff, by the way. But. No, you're right. Now, did you watch that clip? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Well, yeah, it's yeah. I love it anyway. I just love it. Um, again, it's they're basically, and I just saw. Oh, I couldn't believe this. Somebody posted a clip. Uh, Quentin Tarantino does this podcast with uh, another woman, and he had one. To, uh, but they're it's not just podcasts. It's like right. they're, they're on camera. And they talk about a certain film, and they had he had one uh, devote, devoted to Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, and he slammed that scene. He said he he obviously likes the film or finds it interesting, but he didn't like the way it ended. Hmm. And he said something that just struck me as completely moronic. Anyway, I love it. It it you know does it have anything to do with the narrative? Yes, it does, and it doesn't. I mean, it has to do the film mocks and counter groups and, and you know the the place that Mad Men ended up like what was that place called? Yeah, Esalen something, or something Institute or something. Yeah, the retreat, and it yeah, mocks there, those. There, yeah. yeah, mocks those places. So when they're wandering around, they're looking into each other's eyes. It's it's um, going back to making fun of that. But it's just such a great way to end the film because you know the whole thing was were they going to swap lives and they come right to the brink of doing it. And then they just sort of stop themselves and look at each other and they don't. And they walk out of the hotel and then you get this incredible scene where, they, where he uses the Jackie DeShannon song. And, um, you know, I have thoughts on what he's trying to say, but I just, I just love to experience it, just the way he films it. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Was Quentin Tarantino's, was his beef with it? And I'm, I'm not saying I have ascribed to this because I haven't yeah. seen the whole movie, but was he suggesting that it was, that it may be sentimentalized? Possibly. I Honestly, I don't remember what his specific thing is. He just seemed to think that it had no place in the film. But uh, to me, I, uh, it's just the perfect ending for that film. Um, you know, the rest of the film's not bad. It's pretty good. It's... Uh, it's a snapshot of a moment. Um, got some funny things in it. Robert Culp's funny. Um, but uh, I I don't know when it actually, because I'd seen the film before. It was probably just a couple of years ago, two or three years ago when I watched the film, where it was just, I can't believe how good this is. And why, why have I never thought of this? Because that was really, I was thinking, if I ever put these in order, that would be a contender for number one. I love that so much. And it has a lot to do with how much I love the song. It's great when they're in the elevator and yeah, they've got the, and you describe it well, they've got the expressions on their faces and just the yeah. way the song kind of plays, plays with that a little bit. Yeah, it starts, I think it starts on the elevator, right? The very beginning of the song. Yeah. And, and one of the guys, I mentioned him, one of the guys who's out there that uh, I think uh, Diane Cannon ends up like looking directly at, it's this guy named Larry Tucker who got a great story. Now, obviously you've seen advice and consent because you were just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember just before the scene um, where he goes to the gay bar, he visits this guy with a beard to try and track down? Sort of, guy? I don't remember the guy's okay. face, but I do remember- This guy's basically a pimp for the guy that's blackmailing him. Um, anyway, that's Larry Tucker, who was an associate of Paul Mazursky's. He's a big mm -hmm. roly poly guy. And he's, he's, he's in advice and consent. And um, he, he 
had, uh, he wrote the script, I think, for Head with Paul Mazursky. He's a really interesting character. Okay. I think, you know, if you ever read an autobiography by him, I think it'd be fantastic. 